Um, and then I had a white fly problem. I was just struggling and struggling to get control of it. So what I did was, which I haven't listed in this study, is I went with a shop vac and I just sucked them all off the leaves. And that, it kind of damaged the leaves a little bit, but I'll tell you, it's better to have a little bit of damaged leaves, because I still got those plants and they're doing fine, than to lose the whole plant and lose like 60% or 70% or of your crop due to a white fly infestation. You know, they'll suck the life out of that thing. So I had used that shop vac quite to good success. I put mothballs in the shop vac and that worked really good to kill all those white flies, but there was one or two left and sure enough, after about three weeks, they come back because they breed like rabbits, of course. Um, you know, anything that's bad for you generally be breeds like rabbits. And uh, so they came back and I just started struggling. I tried some of the online methods of mixing a little oil and soap and I tried that. That'd work a little bit and then they'd come right back and devastate. You know, they'd be raging. And so there are some techniques I want to share with you that do work. Finally, I figured out what worked. And right now you can go in my greenhouse and it is bug free. Now there is beneficial insects. There's ladybugs and different good insects that this stuff won't kill. So let's talk about this for a minute. For pests, we use Micatrol and Malt X in the hydroponic greenhouse for removing whitefly, thrips, and aphids. Now in the field, we use Botanigard and Malt X. Now Botanigard and Micatrol is the same thing. It's Bassiana bavaria. It's a strain of fungus that grows on these little bugs. And it basically grows inside of these bugs so much until it just kills them. And it takes about three days. It's really clean. You get a good clean kill. There's no chemical residue. You can harvest the same day. And uh, anyway, so these two products, Botanigard and Micatrol, is the same thing. The only difference in both of those products is the carrier and it's got a carrier that's okay for hydroponics so and it's okay for greenhouse use that's why I use it it's really benign um, flea beetles uh, if you use this Botanigard and Malt X, you can get rid of flea beetles which every year I've had a problem with on my eggplants the eggplant is still produced you know I finally learned to love eggplant I figured I was about a year away and sure enough after I started growing it I started liking it because I learned there's that's a fantastic plant every year they had got so many flea beetles and they still keep on producing but what I learned is if you plant that eggplant and keep it in your house or in a sunny window or a greenhouse anywhere where you can start it really early and you put that greenhouse or you put that eggplant out really large in May or even April next year I want to plant in April and just use covers over the crops if it freezes I want to get as early as possible and I went to Living Web Farms and they had eggplants that were this high and this big around it was incredible I've never seen eggplants that large and it's mostly because they put them out early and then their soil is incredible with life uh, they really take care of that um, and make sure they're doing the right thing on, with their soil, which I'm going to follow that practice. Um, what I realized was that with eggplants is, um, if you get it out early enough, the eggplant is bigger than those little bugs can really munch on them, is what happens is. But when you put out a small little egg, eggplant in May, it's going to get uh, it's going to get an infestation of flea beetles unless you spray this product. And if you spray this product, y you won't have that problem. They might not grow to be this high, but if you put it out early enough, you got a chance if your soil's good. These products do have proven results. You know, these are excellent products. They're OMRI certified. Organic pest control. Spray at dusk so you don't spray your pollinators. Even though these sprays are pollinator friendly, they won't kill your pollinators like some of the things will that I'm going to outline here uh, on this list. But those two products that I just told you about, Micatrol and uh, Maltex, those are, those are uh, friendly to beneficial insects. You know, that's really hard to find something like that. 
So we use BT on cabbage, um, broccoli, squash, and, and cucumber worms of all sorts. You know, getting those little worms in your broccoli, you work so hard and that broccoli looks really beautiful and then to get it home and find tons of worms, that is a tremendous irritant. So what we use is BT, that's uh, all these things. What's that stand for? BT? Um, Bacillus, bacillus, yeah, bacillus, bacillus thuringiensis, but you know, it's just called BT. And you can get these things from Southern Ag in Hendersonville. Spinosad is great for worms and fruit trees and other uses. Neem oil. Neem oil is a great general purpose spray, but it will kill everything. So you want to really use it sparingly. I used it uh, one year. I had Mexican bean beetles ravaging my bean plants. So I used it once or twice on them, but I, I only sprayed it at a time where I knew that bees weren't going to be flying around. Generally at night or early, early in the morning. And it's the same with bumblebees. You know, bees of all sorts are becoming an endangered species. And if we lose bees, your food prices are going to go through the roof. And that's another reason why I'm having these gardening classes. <clears throat> Diatomaceous earth is great for mechanical pest control. Now that's one of the most wonderful things, diatomaceous earth. What it does is it lacerates the bodies of the pests. It's like if you were to walk and crawl through broken glass, you'd just become lacerated and you'd bleed to death. That's what diatomaceous earth does to the pest. It's actually good for you. You can take some small amounts of it internally. There's food grade diatomaceous earth. We give it to chickens, horses. Uh, we give it to goats and their feed and it keeps them from getting worms. Um, it's a wonderful product. It's totally benign. And what I use I'll tell you about this in a minute because I think I have a picture on this one for applying di diatomaceous earth. Now pyrethrin is a powerful spray. Um, I use it but I haven't used any this year. I might have used it once last year or twice. I don't even, no I didn't use it last year either. I used it the year before. I don't use that a lot. Now that is an organic spray. It's very benign. It goes away right away. It doesn't harm your soil. It won't kill earthworms. It just kills the pest, but the thing I don't like about it is it kills everything and I'm trying to target what I want to kill. I don't want to just kill every bug out there um, necessarily. Another thing I found out is if you keep your weeds down, which I failed this year. I was a bug factory, I'll freely admit it. If you keep your weeds down, you won't have as many problems with bugs. And if you keep your plants healthy, and one other thing is, that having bugs in your garden is not bad. You just don't want to be overrun with bugs that are going to be, become pests. You do want to have some bugs in your garden. So I, I'll have a few, I just don't let them overrun me. Now I bought this little sprayer and I don't know if you can see it on the picture here. See this nozzle? This nozzle points upwards. So you put, this is a powder by the way that you spray. So you put this powder in this sprayer and you pump it and it'll get underneath the leaves which is where all the bugs are always going to be hiding. And this is a great product. So I bought one of these. I think it cost me 20 bucks online. This is a little bit of information about Mycotrol O. As we discussed already, it's uh, the insect killing fungus, Bavaria bassiana, and it's OMRI listed. The nice thing I like about this is it can be used up to the day of harvest, so it's really benign. It, it'll go in there and it'll flat decimate the population you want to get rid of. It's really worked well for me. I was struggling for probably two to three months with a white fly problem and this thing is what cured it and got rid of it. Um, my control O. Um, you want to store it in a cool dry place. It's got a shelf life of about one year. They come in quarts. Um, the environment you can use it in is outdoor crops, orchards, vineyards, nursery, greenhouse, grow room, hydroponics, aquaponics. Look at that. That's 
quite incredible. Pond and environment, interior scapes, container plants, and house plants. This stuff is excellent to use and there is no better product out there. One problem you'll have a lot of times with pests is they'll get immune to some of your sprays. They will not get immune to that because it basically it's a little organism that will grow on them until they implode or explode. Multex works primarily as an insect growth regulator that disrupts the molting process in insects. Once treated with Multex, insects become sluggish, stop feeding, and fail to mature and reproduce. Multex also acts as an insect repellent. So basically what it does, you know, these insects, they molt several times and go through several of their life cycles until they become adult. And what this does, this stops all that dead in their tracks and they quit eating and they're, it basically makes them sick to where they can't go to their next life cycle. So this stuff's really a tremendous asset. This stuff mixed together has helped me to completely control the, the greenhouse growing. And I use it outdoors too. So this product is the same as, uh, oh, you want to store it in a cool dry place and the shelf life is a little longer on this one. It's 15 months. Now this is what the manufacturer is going to tell you, but I suspect they'll last a lot longer than that because I went down when I picked it up at Southern Ag. Uh, they told me they keep this stuff on their shelves and as long as you keep it cool, comparatively cool, I keep all these products in my basement where it usually doesn't get ever above 70 and in the winter time it's about 55. So these products theoretically they told me they'll last just about forever, but the company has to put limits. So they say the shelf life's 15 months. I think it's probably a little longer than that. Um, with this Micotrol, uh, you can't use it on any uh, product that's toxic to fish. So if you've got a pond or you're doing aquaponics, which I doubt if anybody here is going to be doing that, and you can't use it there. But the sky's the limit with this stuff. I use it on my hydroponics. It works great. Um, another thing in your greenhouse, you want to use these yellow sticky pads. You can buy them in a lot of places. This one's a little large. I bought it from China. I think the better ones are the small ones that you can buy online and you just hang it with a, any kind of little hook. I made little hooks to hang that with. Now, you see my little spools? I've got all these tomatoes hanging on strings and spools. And as they grow, the top portion grows up, I lower the spool. Let's see if I got another picture here of that. Nope, I guess not. Um, but the way to grow tomatoes, I got this from a university. The way to grow tomatoes, at least in a greenhouse, is on a spool that you can lower. And what happens is, this particular tomato, you can't see it here, but it basically winds around the bucket, the vine does. I, I pull the leaves off of it, I cut the leaves close to the vine, and then it just winds around down as I lower the plant down. And the top part is always continually green. And a lot of folks, when they have tomatoes, they'll grow them in the ground or whatever, and they'll just notice that it dies from the bottom up. I have a theory about that. My theory is that if you get your own tomato seeds and you grow them in your area for a certain amount of generations, that it'll quit doing that. Because the first class I did, I talked to a guy, he said, you know, those never did that in the mother country. And I said, did you have your own seeds? He said, yes. I said, well, none of us here in America or mostly the world now have our own seeds anymore. I want to encourage you guys to save your own seeds, as many as you can. Trade them with your friends. I save seeds as many as I can um, and I want to get as many generations of plants growing here and even if it's a, um, a, a hybrid, which I grow a lot of hybrids, they're good for certain purposes, they don't get as much disease, um, I'll still take some of those seeds and grow them even though I know it won't be the exact same mother plant. But in cases like the peppers, I don't care. If it's a small pepper or a, a large pepper, who cares? As long as it's sweet or hot, depending on whatever I wanted in the beginning. And I'll grow that thing several generations on my farm and try to produce my own seeds, I think, is a way that the plants become accustomed to your growing area. And that's something that the Lord 
uh, built into these plants that is quite fantastic. So um, we've gone over just a little bit, but I still want to have questions. Is there any questions? Yeah, well, can you play act like the sludges, dirt, and head them floods? Yeah, I think it, uh, what it, most pests hate cow and clay because it's a lot like diatomaceous earth. It cuts them. But it will get washed away with water. Yes, and, and so will diatomaceous earth. But if you're in a greenhouse, you're not going to get water coming over the top because you're going to be watering. If you water in your greenhouse, you should water the soil only. Um, Don't spray your plant down. Clay on the ground? No, I put it all over the leaves of that plant. I, I just follow the instructions on the bag and basically what you do is you just spray it on your plants and then once the spray dries it's got a thin film of that stuff on the plant. Okay, um, where do you get this? You get it from fifth season. And by the way I told you I'd tell you where you get all the materials. Yeah, wait one minute. 